J Pro General Settings Tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and I've been using this app for seven years, and I'm going to show you all about them. So I've been using this app for about seven years, and I have read the whole owner's manual from cover to cover multiple times. If you go in the app to the user manual, the whole user manual is available. It's really boring, so I read it, and I'm going to tell you guys what I learned about the general settings. So if you go over here, you press the middle button, and you press this little settings icon, we're going to go to the first one, which is general. Now, these give you some general settings to have to de deal with your songs, the mixer, and the decks. So the first one that we're going to talk about is play immediately. If you have this one on, Anytime you load a song into a deck, it is going to automatically start playing. Honestly, I think this setting is really annoying, and I don't know why you'd want songs to automatically play when you load them, but it's here if you like that. So we're going to just load up a song, and it starts playing immediately on that deck, and if we do it on the other deck, it starts playing immediately. So if you're wondering why every time you load a song, it is playing immediately and messing up your mix, it could be that you have this setting on. I do not recommend having this setting on, so we're gonna turn it off. Now, the next one we're gonna talk, to, talk about is a little bit confusing, and it took me a couple of tries to figure it out, but I figured it out. So it says jump to start cue. So this is gonna jump to the first it's gonna to jump to the cue point you set with the cue point set button. So let's use this little track as an example, and let's do it right here. So if you go over here, this is what I thought it did, and you put the first cue point in in the cue point section, and then we eject. So it's at minus 15 seconds here. Now we're gonna eject, and we have this setting on where it's gonna to jump to start cue. We're gonna load that song again, and it didn't save anything. And if you're wondering why, it's because it saves where you press the set button. So it's not the Q button in the Q point section, it is the set button. So if we do set here, minus 13 seconds, we're gonna eject the track. And now anytime you load up the track, it is gonna start where you put the set button. So if there's a song that you play a lot, but there's like an intro that you want to cut out, or you like playing the song after the second drop, or after a certain point, you could have this setting set, and then any time, any song in your playlist that you play, if you have it set, when you load the track, it's going to start at that point. So keep that in mind. It could be helpful, or it could be annoying. Just now you know what it does, and if that's a setting that you want to use, you can next one has to do with the EQs and effects. So right now we have it at the setting that it would be set to when you first start the app. So when we change songs, our EQs, if you have the EQs, the bass and the effects on, once every time you change songs, the effects are going to stay on, the EQs are going to stay where they are. So if we go over here to settings general, and then reset effects and EQ controls. We're gonna put that on. So let me show you what it off again. This is off and now I am changing songs and nothing is changing with the EQs or the effects. Changing songs now. Now I'm gonna go here to settings, general, and then reset e EQ and effects, done. Now watch as I change tracks. I change tracks and all the effects are on, off. I'm going to adjust the EQs, and then when I change the track with this setting on, it's going to adjust. So it's going to take all the effects off and bring all of the EQs back to normal. So if that's the way you like to mix and you don't want to have to switch it back every time, I recommend having this setting on. But keep in mind, this does not affect the faders. So if the fader is down and we change songs, the fader is still going to stay down. This only, per this only affects the EQs and the effects. So if you have the slider down, it's not gonna change that, so keep an eye on your sliders. All right, now let's go to the next one. And this one is protect 
active deck. So if you don't have this on and you have a song playing and then you go to load another song in the deck, it'll load it immediately. So this could get you in trouble if you're in the middle of a mix and you accidentally load another song by hitting a button by accident and it could mess up you, the whole vibe of your mix and it could ruin your whole set. So to avoid this, we go over here to general and then protect active deck. So now this is an active deck with a song playing. And if we go to load another song, let me see, hold on. We got a song playing and then we go to load another song. It's gonna say right deck protected. You are about to load a song onto an active deck. Would you like to proceed? And if you wanna load, if, if this was something that you wanted to do, just press load. It just gives you that that second chance to say, did you really mean to do that? And if you didn't mean to do that, then the deck is protective and it won't ruin your mix. So I always keep this one on. It's just another safety measure to make sure that we don't make any silly mistakes. All right, now let's move on to sync type. Now this is gonna control if you if the sync is going to sync the BPM end beats or just BPM. So with just the BPM, if we sync it, it's just gonna change the BPM to what it is on the other side of the deck. Next is the beat sync interval. You could do four beats or one beat. So the one beat is gonna be tighter. I recommend to keep it on four beats because this is what most of the other DJ programs have and it's what most DJs are used to and one beat will just confuse you. Now we go to maintain on song load. This setting selected, it would leave sync mode on as we change songs. So it's not gonna affect sync when we switch different songs. So this is if you're using, you plan on using sync for most of the songs you're DJing with, I would recommend having this on because you don't have to put sync on, put sync off, or mess around with it. It does that automatically. And now turn off on pause, scratch, and cue jump. This one, it tries to quantize the song to the beat and tries to keep it in sync even when you scratch and you hit the cues or you hit pause or the off button. So the next one is tempo slider. This one I went over a lot and you could just adjust how much percent of the tempo slider will be changed. So at 10%, if we are at one, if the song is at 128, it'll only go up to 140. But if we go, if we go all the way up to 75, we can get really big BPM jumps. This is if you're planning on switching from high BPMs to low BPMs, and you'll be able to use the tempo slider even more accurately. And then invert, that just means if you put it up, it goes down, it's pretty simple. Start time and stop time. So this is how long it takes for the song to get started. So if we put this on really high, it's gonna sound like the, it's gonna sound like the record is slowly going up. And it's the same thing if you do it, if you do the stop time really high. This is a good setting if you want to do transitions from large BPMs to small BPMs. You just set it on a high stop time and then the track will slow down and you can play a lower BPM song. It's a really easy DJ trick and it's great for doing different genres. And now we got the cue, the cue points and loops. Start cue button. You could either have it at set or jump or cue. I keep it at set or jumps. Auto play when, when triggering cue points. This one gets really confusing. It'll automatically play at the cue points. I don't recommend having that set. And then set cue point at beginning of the loop. This will give you a new cue point at the beginning of any loop. I don't really recommend using this one. Again, it gets confusing and it does too much stuff for you. And then align loops to beats. I always keep this on. It'll just keep your loops in tune with the music. So if you guys learned something new, give this video a like. If you like learning new stuff about DJ Pro and DJing with the iPad, subscribe to my channel. I make DJ videos every day.